Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. It's road trip season in Sketchy Land, so this fast food joint is booming thanks to a steady supply of sodium-craving families. Likewise, the kidneys are only happy when a steady stream of blood is being shoved through the glomeruli. When that lets up for any reason, you're going to get pre-renal acute kidney injury. 70% of AKI cases that present to the hospital are due to decreased renal perfusion. Here's a quick reminder from our Intro to AKI video of the labs that you'll see with pre-renal AKI. When blood flow to the kidneys decreases, they respond by cranking up the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Angiotensin causes systemic vasoconstriction, which improves renal perfusion pressure. Aldosterone, meanwhile, helps kidneys retain fluid, thus increasing intravascular volume. Kidneys do this by actively reabsorbing sodium and urea. This leads to a serum BUN to creatinine ratio above 20. Highly concentrated urine with very little sodium and urea and bland urine microscopy. Okay, let's dive, or drive, into the most common etiologies. There are a lot of them. So to make them easier to remember, we're grouping them based on their mechanism. But keep in mind that many etiologies cause AKI via more than one mechanism, and patients may have more than one etiology causing their AKI. The first category includes hypotension and true hypovolemia, meaning there isn't enough fluid in the pipes feeding the kidneys. We're going to put all the etiologies for this category in this car, which is running on empty. Massive dehydration due to GI losses, e.g. a leaky tailpipe and or vomiting, can cause hypovolemic prerenal AKI. Showering in fast food coffee can cause cutaneous losses like extensive burns and excessive sweating. This sweet, sweet hood ornament will remind you that renal losses from aggressive overdiuresis or osmotic diuresis, for example, in hyperglycemia, can also cause prerenal AKI. And of course, there's the most obvious cause of not enough blood in the pipes, bleeding. This ketchup explosion should remind you to watch out for prerenal AKI in patients with GI bleeds, trauma, surgery, and those from whom an entire human has recently emerged. Our recurring lightning bolt symbol will remind you to watch out for AKI in all types of shock, including septic, anaphylactic, cardiogenic, and neurogenic. Okay, that first category included conditions in which there just isn't enough fluid to keep the kidneys happy. This next category involves conditions in which there is too much fluid overall, like that ridiculous Merck-sized slushy drink, but instead of being inside the pipes that feed the kidneys, it's flooding third space tissues. Science nerds call it decreased effective circulatory volume, while poets describe it as Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. We're going to put all the volume overload etiologies in this car. In these conditions, it's important to estimate the patient's dry weight, that is, their normal weight when they're not fluid overloaded, so you can assess the severity of their initial condition and monitor the efficacy of your treatment. 